Well, Lay that on the table and take a picture of it. It actually did. <laughs> like with the egg in front. Do it like he's. How did he do it? I'm not seeing it. Was like this? Was it like this? No, you got to stand a banana up. Ah, that's all right. Oh, Fuck yeah, it. Oh, he used to be a journalist, you know. I know. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I'm good a minute. This is what your yeah. life's been to, Jay. What a picture I, of him. Used, I used to be the Prime Minister, for fuck's sake. <laughs> <laughs> I had the Chancellor quaking in his fucking boots to answer my questions. And now I'm balancing bananas on eggs as people laugh at me. There we go. Yeah, that's, um, Done. Uncensored okay. preview coming up. I want to try now. How many of you want to do try it? that? <laughs> <laughs> he's thinking how he's going to do it. <laughs> Can I not get, you not get smaller eggs? Yeah. Can I not do like a mid, hollow out a mini egg? Yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, I'm not looking at it. Full time devils, this is the Chelsea preview. I've got Abdullah to the right, I've got Halston to the left. Uh, let's get stuck into it, guys. This is uh, this is our last chance for top four. I don't even know how yeah. we're still in with the chance of top four, but we are, and this is the last chance we have Going to beat for a Chelsea. Top sheet, Champions League's qualifying spot. Yeah, <laughs> and if we don't beat Chelsea, then yeah, I suppose our season's cracking up like an yeah. egg being slapped by a massive erect penis. Uh, Abdullah, top four. <laughs> is, it, is it still on? Is it still on? Is it still on? Um, yes, I think. Arsenal will drop. <laughs> Arsenal will drop points to uh, to Leicester yeah. just before we play, so that will give us an opportunity to, to go in there because it's Leicester away. So wait, are we it's are at the game. title race now. <laughs> Unfortunately, Alison, yeah, we are yeah. at the title Don't race. Think but we can mathematically win it. I mean, Arsenal and Chelsea. People talk about how much of a mess we're in. Arsenal and Chelsea, I think, are in a bit of a mess as well, and yeah. it's almost like we're all the Europa like, League as well. Yeah. So that that could give us a bit of a boost as well. Exactly, exactly. How, how do you rate our top four chances now? I mean, obviously, it would require a win versus Chelsea. What's annoying is that it was in our hands if we'd have beat Everton. Yep. It was literally in our hands. You know, we beat Chelsea. We we win two fairly winnable games at the end of the season. We've done it. We could have even lost to City and it wouldn't have mattered. Uh, that's the frustrating part is that despite how very shit we've been, we still have the opportunity to, to put this thing to bed under our own steam and we haven't taken those chances and we've not deserved to lose every single game in that, but there's some we've absolutely deserved to lose. And uh, was it seven losses in nine games, no goals scored in eight and a half hours. These are some bad statistics. Seven yeah. losses in nine games for Manchester It's United. funny, you just keep seeing new ones every week now. Yeah, every I, loss. I didn't know who was tracking that. Yeah. <laughs> like, oh, since, since 1962. First time since 1908, like, Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> Who the hell's counting that? <laughs> exactly, exactly. But... You know, I know we've spoken about this in the past when maybe we've missed out on top four and we've still gone on had a decent summer where we've signed big players. But just how much will it affect our chances of signing oh, the top, 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 top Absolutely players? Absolutely not at not all. Not at all, really, though. No, because one, we ain't signing the top, top, top players. We never have and we never will. All right, maybe Paul Pogba was probably one of those. Zlatan was a 35-year-old. Let's not pretend yeah. he was 27 when we signed him. Van we Persie. never really signed them. 30 or no, 29? 29 was he was, yeah. But well, he was in his prime, to be fair. That was his best year at um, Arsenal. All right, it ended Coming up being, up but like, yeah. Yeah. Uh, we still not, yeah. He's yeah. still not, um, you know, with, when you're talking top, top, you're talking people on the Ballon d'Or shortlist, in yeah, my yeah, opinion. Yeah. And we've never really gone and signed, signed those players anyway. So, and do we need to sign top players? I, I've been saying, man, if the right guy is a 32-year-old on a free from a championship club and he's the, the key to what we're trying to do because he's got a specific characteristic about the way he plays. Get him. I don't give a shit how much these players cost. I want to know, are we getting the right player in? Yeah. That's all that matters. You look at the, the bargains that have been out there. Toby Alderweireld for £25 million is a free transfer this summer if yeah. we wanted to get him. Um, so you can forget about £100 million for Delit. Forget about £100 million for Koulibaly. You can you could probably limit yourself to signing players from the bottom ten teams in the Premier League and improve United enough to to probably put a lot more pressure on. Probably not challenge, but a lot more pressure on. When you're talking there about the right player coming in, and you know you don't envisage that, you, what, that what United needs at the minute is a 32 year old player, but you'd probably say the best signing we made since Fergie left was Latan. Yeah, in terms of what he bought on a pitch, I think the problem, the reason we underrate what Latan did was because. 
he was the man that we were reliant on for the goals every week. And, and when we signed him, that was my issue because I was confident that he'd score 20 plus goals in a season mm. in all competitions. It's the fact that there wasn't that other striker on the pitch. Marcus Rashford obviously stepped up when he got injured. But I think had we had Lukaku in that season and Zlatan, would have been, it would have been like perfect. You know, having that leader in the dressing room as well and taking the pressure off a bit, uh, off him a bit. But in terms of what he'd given us, the League Cup final, um, the leadership. I think he kept the likes of Pogba God, in I line. Think it's close. Yeah, it might. It I might think be it's that. Closer, mm. isn't there, but I think yeah. Paul Pogba gets a lot of mistreatment by United. Fans. He does. A lot of it's down to what's perception as attitude. And and I, you know what, I felt for it myself the other day. Uh, I was talking to someone with decent connections at the club, and I said, "Have you seen this? Here? Pogba supposedly come out and tell teammates, and he's like, has he though? Mm. Yeah. We were talking about something which we know to be false only a few days ago." And then he was like, what if it's that situation? Because mm. no one ever comes out and says that's... It's an easy way out for the media to talk about Pogba. Because you look at it and you go, I believe he's, I believe yeah. that. You know, Raul is his agent, I can believe that. So you, you do believe it. And maybe we, we're suckers to that. So in, in terms of quality, Pogba probably is the best signing. It's just that we've not built the right team around him. And yes, at times he's been inconsistent. But it probably is like, you'd say Zlatan, in terms of what he achieved, the leadership he brought, kept... The likes of Pogba in line in that dressing room. Worked with Mourinho really well. But yeah, Pogba, Pogba quality-wise. And as much as fans criticise Paul Pogba and journos criticise him and just about everyone criticise him, it seems like he's still... He, he must be doing something right. He's in the PFA Team of the Year this season. None Does he deserve should. to be in? Um, I had a couple of issues in that Team of the Year. I don't think Mane. I thought Hazard probably done enough really? to be in all uh, I don't know. I think Liverpool aren't winning that league or going anywhere near it without Mane. Uh, he, I don't think Trent. Up, I think Doherty and Wan Bissaka. I think Wan Bissaka gets that. Um, yeah. And I could make a case for Neves over Pogba, but it's not. It's not million. It's not uh, egregious. It's not like that's yeah. a ridiculous decision. He's had really good numbers this year, um, and he's he's done it with a manager that hated him prior to Christmas. Yeah. Uh, and a manager that's put a lot of faith in him and and asked him to be a leader that maybe he isn't um, post Christmas and has been. He's been carrying this team post Christmas. I just think with, an, with something like that that's voted for by the players, right? Fans have been sort of watching him all season. I don't think even big Paul Pogba's biggest fan would say that he deserves to be in a best eleven from this season in the league. So what is it that is influencing the players that isn't influencing the fans? The is it just that they know more about yeah. football? Yeah, of course. Is it? They're, they're, they're coming up against him on the watch, pitch. Though. How much are they watching? What do you mean? How much are the players watching? Well, they're they're sitting the there, they analyse, they come up against it. They're, they're analysing, yeah, they've got to sit there and analyse games. I think they're, I think they're they come up against shown. him on the pitch, they see the breathtaking passes he does, they well, yeah, see how I don't think they're watching him week in, week out like we are. Yeah, but at the same time, how many times did, I've been saying this all day, how many times did Gerard get in that yeah. team of the year? Because that's the argument that's causing Gerard all the time. Liverpool fans go to, well, he was in team of the year, man. No, Liverpool fans don't want to talk about team of the year. He himself to sleep at night not getting in team of the year. Yeah, all over his twelve Premier League titles. Yeah. But at the end of the day, there has been players that have been there that haven't deserved it. And Pogba's his numbers are incredible. When we've been at our best, he's been the main guy as well. When everything goes to crap around him, it's mainly because people aren't moving properly around him. The team's performing um, shockingly and abysmal around him as well. So it's not a bad shout. But like I said, Neves and a few in with a shout as well around him. OK, then, talking about uh, players and more specifically their reactions after the games, um, because we've seen a lot of them coming out on social media and almost apologising to the fans. Marcus Rashford put yeah. one uh, recently, which I saw a mixed response to. Some United fans having a go at him for that. Um, so I'm wondering what you think to that. Do players actually owe fans an apology at the minute? Is that what we want to see on social media or do we rather just see uh, silence? It depends on the player. Right. Yeah. Paul Scholes would never... If, if Paul Scholes played now, I don't... I mean, he literally got Twitter today, I believe. So Did he? Instagram, Instagram as well. Did. He's yeah. on Instagram, I think. So. Paul Scholes is on Instagram? Yeah. yeah. Uh, he's not taking fair, selfies, he's is he? He's not a on his photos, so maybe he's down for that. Do you reckon it's as good uh, as Cantona's? Doubt it. What kind of content are you going <laughs> to give us, Scholes? <laughs> Did the curtains match the drapes? We'll find out soon. Um, I think if, it depends on the player. If you're a player that's active on social media, uh, um, one of the major issues that I had with Wayne Rooney uh, was that he was active on social media. We lost the game a few years back. And uh, a club captain at the time tweeted, can't wait, to go, can't wait to go watch Tiger Woods tonight. Oh. The first thing he tweeted after a loss, and he had Schweinsteiger been here 22 minutes. 
was like, I apologise wholeheartedly. Was, like, we'll do better next yeah. game. And you just think, get an intern, mate. You know, just, yeah. just have so, what's your agent doing yeah. at the moment? And whether it's authentic or not, like, yeah. that's badly advised from him. If you're not on social media, I don't, I don't care Rooney used to do. threaten people. I'm <laughs> 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 not you out. Himself he threatened. Oh, he threatened himself. Yeah, j- himself. But to be fair, I think it's because that guy came off Twitter and he had removed. Yeah. He was trying to threaten someone, but he added himself. Oh, well. no, it's brilliant. If you just <laughs> search for... I mean, he can't have deleted them all. If you just oh, search for so many good Wayne Rooney's Ray at Rooney on Twitter, Twitter there's some absolute... He started off Twitter. Well. Twitter should thank Wayne Rooney. <laughs> yeah. Because he, yeah. he, he, he made us all get I, on that. I think if you... If you I think you probably shouldn't. We're in a totally different time now where you don't see players often. 25 years ago, you probably would bump into players and players would have to, you know, not necessarily explain themselves, but they would have to face up to some yeah. some grilling a little bit from mm. fans. Yeah. It's so removed now. It's so removed. They're, you know, they're mollycoddled from one place to another. Their security guards are following them left, right and centre. They don't get a chance to necessarily mingle with local people too much no more. So social media is a, a place that they can do that. And yeah, there's a lot of, there's a lot of overreaction on social media. Mm. Uh, and there's a lot of anonymous people that only throw bile out on there. They would never say it to the face. Absolutely. Some of the stuff that Rashford was getting, I think, was oh, just absolutely the disgraceful. The last 21 today. years old, he's a Manchester United fan. Look at what he's done over the last years. He's living people's dreams. And I think when I, he and, spoke, and the stick he, spoke he gets. He as a United fan as well when he spoke. He didn't just speak as... I'm Manchester United player. He said, as a United fan, it's not good enough what's happening on the pitch. I'd rather a player say that than not talk about it at all and, and not say what, what's happened's wrong and, like, uh, and not even show any sort of care towards being at Manchester United. And call me old-fashioned, but who puts things on social media that they, they, they're not, they wouldn't be willing to say in real life? It seems like everyone. Yeah, a lot of people it seems like that. everyone. Yeah. And I just think like, you've, got to be, you've got to have something odd going on in your head to be able to do that anonymously. And you, you knowing full well you've not got the balls to do it in real life. After a footballer. Right, well, not everyone who's named the cat after a footballer. Gareth Bale, one, two, three, four. Thank you for watching. Uh, right, predicting the 11's time. Let's get them in. Uh, who do we think is starting for United against Chelsea? It's a must win game. Uh, I've realised I've not even come up with a predict 11, <laughs> but I'll do it off the cuff. Abdullah, let's start with you, mate. I've not come up with one. I'm doing the same. Oh, hey, yeah, right. Uh, do you, do you want straight to off the bat, probably going to go with the back four. I have a feeling Damien might, yeah. get, might start as right, but I think I think he wasn't too bad. I, I know Damien in as well. The, the Sane goal did come on his side, but I was uh, sat. Okay. I, but I was sat right in the corner. I could see Ashley Young, the lad that works hard. You know, obviously he's the captain of the team, walking back towards that end of the pitch. So I can't completely blame him for that goal. I think he actually kept his line pretty well whilst everyone got sent by Aguero because Chris Smalling. You know, um, so Damien right back. I'm going to go, unfortunately, Smalling, Lindelof, Luke Shaw. Uh, midfield of Scott McTominay. I think Scott McTominay needs to come back into the side. Mm. I think he should have started yesterday, personally. Uh, Fred and Pogba, probably again. I don't think Andreas was completely awful. Just didn't progress the ball enough at times going forward, but I'd probably like to see Scott back in the side. I think that will happen as well. Can we not give her error a game in this? I, d- I don't know if he's back from injury. I don't know what the oh, situation is. Is, 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 is it the he's injury? injured, obviously. That's but, what I yeah. mean. Even if he has agreed to go to another club, he'd do, he do a job in this yeah, game. Yeah, I'd love Chelsea. Herrera in a game like this as well. You've got to look at our form. Well, one every form game that, that he was featured on, really. Well, that's kind of what well, I was other thinking. Other than like, the Paris at home game. I think that was it. That. Yeah, and Arsenal away. I think those are the only two games. Did he play in Arsenal away? Because I remember Fred played in that one. Oh, he might have. Fred had a really good game. Oh, he might have not. It was Maich that come back for that. Yeah, so it must have been Paris. Um Front line, hard one. I'd, I'm probably have a weird feeling Sanchez might come back in because we've tried everything recently, haven't we? So no. In the front line, well, Mason Greenwood, <laughs> but we're not going to start him in a game like this. I'd love him. I'd love him to start, but I'm going to go Sanchez, Rashford, and let's go with a wild man. Sanchez, Rashford, Martial. Oh, interesting. Not really tried that, so yeah, we might go with that. Goalie. Uh, David De Gea, obviously. Team. I don't think it's an obviously at the moment, mate. I don't think it's as obvious as it has been in the past. I think with what's going on with his distribution, I think that's really bled over to his yeah. shot stopping. I think his confidence is. Do you drop him though? Does that help his confidence? I don't know. That, see, that's the conundrum. In that's it. I, don't, the... I think if you do drop him, well, I think Romero's got this narco's cut you in your sleep kind of vibe, which I kind of like. Uh, so I'm probably going to go with Romero. 
I think Dave no, no, I needs still to start take out Dave. the limelight a little bit, and I don't know if that'll help him sign a contract or what. But against let's Chelsea, think, though, let's, big, let's, like, I think it's a big what? game. I think I personally see what happens in that Chelsea game. I, I just wouldn't take him. I don't think it helps confidence. I don't think it helps us with him being in there at the moment, though. I think his confidence is completely gone, and I'm, I think a goalkeeper is not the same type as a like a forward. If you're not scoring goals, it's different to if you're conceding yeah. goal after goal after goal. I think maybe take him out. No, it looks like you just pulled that, mate. Have a sit down. Right. Um, I'd probably go with Romero. I'd go with a back three or a back five. Oh, you want to roll it? I'd go with Shaw. I guess um, Lindelof, Smallin, um, Damian. I thought Damian was fantastic. Since mm, he's played okay. that once yeah. since Christmas. Thought you were going to say Phil Jones in a back three. Then that's fair enough. No, uh, I think he's, he's busy eating crayons. Um, <laughs> I'm going to go with Delo at right back. It just offers us something going oh, forward. I'd love Delo um, to start. Man. I think you can get Chelsea behind them, their fullbacks as well. So I would go with Delo. Um, I'm going to go with a midfield three of. Um, I thought. Pereira and Fred had very similar games in that it was like it was night and day with them it was sometimes they do stuff and you're like yeah especially Pereira in the opposition half Pereira in the opposition half was great Pereira in our half terrifying um, and Fred was a bit a mixed bag of both sometimes he'd do some stuff and you're like I'm really getting him and then sometimes you're like Jesus Christ um, but I'd persist with him because there's, there's not really many other options is there I'd, I'd go with Fred McTominay um, just to help prevent the threat um, from midfield of Chelsea just that little bit track Kante down a little bit maybe try and double up on Hazard a little bit too um, I thought we kept Sterling very quiet with Young and Damian I think Delo and Damian would do an equally good job on Hazard um, so midfield three of Pogba uh, Fred and McTominay sitting in behind them wouldn't be shocked to see Matic in that role either uh, and up front I'll go with Rashford and Sanchez um, Although I, I wouldn't be shocked to see Jesse, and I think Jesse's another one on the, on the back of a lot of unfair stuff from United fans. Uh, I think Dave put out in there yesterday at half time in the City game, he made more interceptions than our entire team did combined in the Everton game. Jesse Lingard is an off the ball player, and when people talk about work rate and attitude, Jesse's is perfect. And it's not all about what you do with the ball, especially in a team that plays counter, especially in a team that concedes possession to the opposition. Somebody like Jesse that works so well off the ball. He's always showing for a little link up. People talk about the lack of movement you get with Lukaku. People talk about the lack of movement you get with Marshall. You don't get this with Jesse Lingard. This is what he offers. You know, put FIFA down for half an hour and actually look at what he does and the way he integrates what we do with the ball. Sometimes, um, you know, like I said, like I've said for a long time, is he a Ballon d'Or winner? Absolutely not. But he is a, a good <coughs> footballer, and you can't fill your squad with Galacticos and no. expect it to work. Real yeah. Madrid have proved that. 100%. Um, in the 2000s with an unreal team that will fuck all. So uh, I would go with uh, with Sanchez in this instance, that being said. Um, just because a little bit like Abdul, what have we really got to lose? And I think when he plays central like that as well, Sanchez, I think you get quite a lot out of him. Um, so I'll go with those two. Right, I'm going to go uh, David De Gea in goal. Uh, right back. We'll give it to the low. Small in, Linda Love, centre halves. Luke Shaw at left back. Pogba. Oh, I don't want it to be too similar. I'll go Matic instead of McTominay then. Pogba, Matic, and uh, Fred as the three in midfield. And then up top. I want to put Greenwood in there. It's just not going to happen. I just love to see it happen just because I'm bored yeah. of Sanchez. There's no need to, not to happen now. The guy yeah. is, like, you know, we talk about the numbers he's done. Uh, 44 in 44, 18 assists. You know, that is Messi level numbers. Yes, it's at academy level, but it's still Messi level. No other people are doing that. Mm. He is the one person that's doing that. So doesn't mean he replicates it in the first team. Doesn't mean he gets half of that in the first team. Well, all it means is he's earned the right to show us what he can do. Yeah. That is it. He's earned the right to go, here's a start, lad. You've earned that. Yeah. So go and prove what you, you can do. You never know what happens. Marcus, Marcus started yeah, against Marcus, Arsenal, started against City in, in the space of a couple of weeks. Marcus has got four goals in his first two starts. He, he scores the winner against City. 
He puts us into the FA Cup final. Europa League midget then. You don't pull know. Back the game for you us. don't know what his you know, yeah. youngster's gonna do. It's not. Uh, you're, you're not losing anything. Are you? I'm, I'm, I'm gonna do it then. I'll put. Scored in eight and a half hours. I'll put. I'll You've put, got a kid who's nearly got a fifty in the last eighteen months. That's, <laughs> that's what I mean. Yeah. I mean just especially because we'll be, we've been persevering so long with Sanchez. So I'll put Greenwood there mm -hmm. instead. Uh, Rashford up top, obviously interchanging a little bit, uh, and then Lingard on the right. That's what I reckon. I'd, I'd, I'd love that. I'd love to see a surprise like Greenwood or Chong or something in the team. Just something exciting, just something to get us pumped for that game because it feels like yeah, we're all going in at it. He's, he's work rate is there. So pessimistic. Bench, he plays him, which is weird, but then he'll have, we will just not even bother putting him in the squad and you're like, oh. they, they would have been a half-decent option at times when we've been struggling. Possibly not in the derby because mm. I thought that we had options, Marshall and Lukaku, to come off the bench. But there has been times where we didn't have a forward on the bench and you're like, it's nothing. It costs you nothing. Give them a chance. Okay, then opposition, uh, Chelsea. Obviously, they, though they seemed like they were going through real turmoil when we were going through that great spell, and Oli had just come in, and, and now at the minute it seems like they're, they're, not a Chelsea man. They're, they're coming back <laughs> a little bit though now, aren't they, Chelsea? And um, obviously Hazard's had a great season, but apart from him, uh, who else we need to worry about in that team? It would have been Callum Hudson to die, obviously. But, yeah. Um, Bad injury. Yeah, unfortunately for him, he got injured. Brilliant player. Mm. Off the ball movements. You see the story of me going for that goal the other night? Yeah. My he had a days. great game. He's, he's an underrated player for me in that Chelsea side because he's a proper striker. And <clears> I <throat> think had he started against Liverpool at Anfield, they could have done something. It worries Chelsea me as well. Yeah, like he's more than capable of pulling a 10 out of 10 out of the bag, isn't he? Yeah. More than capable. He has, he, has, he, has, he has that sort of quick turn and straight in the back of the net. And I've watched it for years in the Serie A. And at Napoli, he broke records. I think he's got the best goal scoring record in the Serie A in one season. So. He has got yeah. he's, the, the talents there, especially with a striker. You don't lose that quick turn, that moment where you can fire a shot goal. So Higuain is the one and Hazard to worry about in the front line. William's been abysmal this season. He's been shocking to watch. He's, he's been got horrendous. Match, yeah, he's got to match that intensity and work yeah. rate that you'll get out of Kante midfield because yeah. United have been sluggish at times and if you just let Kante just dictate the pace... That's why I want McTominay and Fred him. because they're both willing to run. McTominay's Fred been a brilliant talk, talk him, I think. Yeah. I think so if you allow McTominay to sit a little deeper, watch Hazard a bit, and then Fred to be out there trying to grab the ball back off Ryan. Uh, Ryan. Kata, 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 Is Kata Fred that player? Yeah. I think he's got it in him. Yeah, he, has. He, did, he did it in the, in the Barcelona game at home, yeah. to be fair. He was winning the ball back really well. It's just it nice what's simple. around him as well. Just, he's not, I, just, I, don't, I don't understand with Fred. I feel like everything he's good at, Herrera is better than him at. Apart from well, maybe dribbling I think and quick Kante, control. I think uh, no, I'd say Fred's one of those players right now for us where because everything around him is not going well, our defenders can't carry the ball well enough, you can't really see him at his best. Right. If the team's not settled around him, it's a bit unfair because I think once we've got an established side, which is going to take years at this rate, you're not really going to see that, that type of player. You really need a proper side around him and it's, I think it's a bit unfair to completely judge Fred. As of yet. Well, I would start him against Chelsea. Where would you get at Chelsea then, mate? Where are the weaknesses? Uh, I think you can go wide against them, but we don't really have the whip. Yeah. Oh, that's um, good. I think you, they do like to press up because they like to hold possession. Uh, mm. You can get behind them. You, the, the same thing that has worked for United as a counter-attacking team is to let the opposition have the ball and then to fire quick passes in. Uh, I'm still disappointed that we didn't do this against City. Look, we... You get Vincent Company booked after nine minutes and then don't run at him all oh, night long. That was the first thing I said. Once he got booked, just pick the ball up, yeah. run straight at him. Yeah. Because he's not the old and Vincent this, this Company. This is why you want your experience and your leaders and you want yeah. someone to grab Marcus and go. Or even at half-time, like, we're going to put 47 balls behind him. I want you to just run at him all day long. Yeah. Like That's what the, the game management that we haven't got... You can do that to Chelsea. You can get behind them. You can get behind them in the wide areas. You can get behind them centrally. No one beats Marcus Rashford's pace. It's ridiculous. Give him a 10 yard head start. I think what we him. need to be doing is, <clears throat> of course, Emerson stepped in instead of Alonso. And Alonso is just an Ashley Young, another Ashley Young situation for Chelsea where mm. you get in behind him too easily, leaves a lot of space. He always seems to be playing well as a ball, wing back. Though. Good on the ball, though. <laughs> he can, he can, he's got a good free kick on him. At least he provides goals and all that. Ashley Young doesn't do anything in terms of that for us. Um, he can cross the ball as well. So there is a bit of an upgrade Ashley Young there. But defensively, he's been abysmal this season. I think Emerson has replaced him, but he has weaknesses in his game. You can't get him behind him again. He's another player who at Roma played um, more of an attacking uh, role, more of a wing-back as well. So I'd say Emerson um, 
is the one that you want to target in this game, or Alonso, whichever starts. You did both of you guys start right wing in your team? You was Lingard, was it? Yeah. No, I, I went with uh, back five, so it'd be Delo. Oh, okay, Delo. Uh, mine probably be, mine was more Alexis in the turn, and then Marcus and Martial, because I, I think Ale get Alexis on Jorginho. Mm. We've seen Jorginho lose the ball in those important positions, and if Fred can push up, McTominay can sit in for any counters, and Pogba and Fred can get on Jorginho, and then Marcus can sort of get in between David Luiz and. Um, I think it's Christensen because I think yeah. Rudiger's out as well. If you can get in between them and Emerson or Alonso, then that could, that could be a good the game for us. The situations we saw with Cumbly, David Luiz will launch you if you get the better of him a couple of times. Yep. So where's the game management to, to put Marcus one-on-one? -on -one? Mm. Company had to absolutely clatter him for that second one. It makes after nine minutes. Yeah. We can do that early doors. We could have someone walking after 20 minutes because they will have to foul him that much. David Luiz loves a red card. Mm. And are launching someone. Yeah, does, yeah. So why why don't we target these things? Why do we 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 saw Oli complain about those those shit house fouls that City do? Did they work? Yeah, they really right work. Nothing wrong, like, there's nothing wrong with it. You get counted on, and you just think launch them. Yeah, Oli himself yeah. Has done it. Yeah, yeah. He took a red card for ah, it. Classic, really video. classic. Why, why don't we see those? That where's the leadership? Where's the dark arts? Like if we had somebody like a Sergio Ramos in defence, yeah, I would oh. absolutely love it. Yo. If we think Ander Herrera is good at that sort of stuff, Sergio Ramos is a black belt who wrote the book about <laughs> that sort of stuff. So like we we haven't got people in the team. Even Wayne Rooney was, was yeah. cute like that at times. Yeah, yeah, we just yeah. Don't have it. Yeah, that's what we, we don't do. have people. Nasty in the footballers. Football. How many times you see like old school United? We would do the, the little corner where we take it and uh, and then run at them, or we we do a throw in and throw it in the back of someone. We yeah. don't yeah. know how to. We don't know that dark art of football anymore. Yeah, we're brand new. The Giggs one was a classic. Remember when it didn't work? Remember when we did it and it didn't work when he tried to tap the corner? Yeah. These old ones as well, didn't they? Oh, I was of it. I like the, the Henri Perez penalty and things like that. <laughs> That's good. You bend the rules a little bit like that. Try it. Do the unexpected. It's a game. It's Try it. Right, score predictions. One all. Two on United. We're not scoring two goals, Abdul. I've got to be positive, mate. I, I always, I always predict us to win, no matter what, what, what it is. So yeah, I'm gonna go two on United. I'm gonna say a tight one, one nil United. But uh, it'll be, it'll, it'll be happy days if we get the win this Sunday, yeah, even after points. the form we've had, because it means that we, I mean, we're not in the driving seat for top four, but it's a big chance of it if we get the win on Sunday. Yeah. Joint, joint on points with Neves Chelsea. Is in, is in with if Arsenal chance. drop points... Arsenal have got Leicester and I think Watford. If Arsenal like drop points the there, then we'll be How level on points with top four. Lost seven in I don't, it, like, we're like, it's kind of still on. That's a positive though, because it means, yeah, we've been crap, but Arsenal and Chelsea, it was 11 just as crap. When Oli came in. And in the last nine games, we've lost seven of them, and we're still talking about being well, in there. We can get out of them on Sunday, and look, if we win, it's going to be an absolute result, and potentially something to actually kind of celebrate at the end of the season, so yeah. fingers crossed, that's <laughs> all we can do now. Uh, right, get in the comments below, subscribe to the channel, we want to hear all your opinions as well, we'll get them in below. Right, we'll see you next time. Uh, make sure you subscribe to these guys, Abdullah, where can the people get you? Twitter, Abdul Gale. I'll help you out in the comments. You won't be able to spell it. <laughs> House on YouTube, where else? Just search Stephen House on YouTube. All sorts going on. Get on it. We'll see you next time. Laters.